This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Uh-oh. This ain't good. That you, Michiru? <laughs> I can tell at a glance that you are the other Michiru. Oh, it's you again? You seem to be appearing a lot recently. ずっと部屋に閉じこもっているようなものだ。実際部屋に閉じこもっていることも多いけど。あの子なんて言ったかしら。ミャオモ。そう。その猫と一緒に部屋で遊んでばっかり。どうも君にもあまり関わらない話して
Think about it, though. If the others notice, they're going to take it the wrong way. That's what she wants, probably. What are you saying, woman? Oh, brother. Hard to take it as a joke when you say it with such a desperate look on your face. <laughs> Pizza time. <laughs> the black cat instantly bites into the doughy cake Michiru offers, not even bothering to smell at first. Foolish little beast. Nothing good can come from allowing yourself to be so thoroughly domesticated. Hmm. Well, that works, I guess. They say animal therapy can be surprisingly effective. You wouldn't be in the school if that were the case. Michiru turns her back to me and makes me leave the room. Or makes to leave the room. <laughs> but she hesitates in front of the door to mumble one final comment. Uh, oh. I wait for the follow-up, anticipating something along the lines of a gotcha, or perhaps, you took me seriously again? What an idiot. But instead, Michiru simply opens the door and trudges out. Okay, well that was, um, a threat. Fiends seem to be heading in a problematic direction. They've been heading in a problematic direction for the last two streams! As if to illustrate, the gathering rain clouds outside cast my room into a grayish gloom. I'm neither a prophet nor a playboy, but I have a strong suspicion that the balance of this claustrophobic shoebox garden is rapidly breaking down. Le gasp! Who could have anticipated this? To fully decipher a story, you need to proceed through it in the proper order. Skipping ahead and learning how things end doesn't make you understand the substance of the matter. We have no choice but to patiently absorb the author's words and wait for things to come together. But it can be difficult at times, even for me. I've been known to flip forward a few pages and take a peek. Once you've read even one line out of order, learned one thing you shouldn't have, it's not possible to wipe your memory clean and return to your previous spot. No matter what sort of sentence it may be, you have no choice but to accept it. That's the price we pay for our curiosity. <laughs> to be fair, that was a tragic waste of a croquette. <laughs> that is similar to the look I have on my face all the time. <laughs> Nice to see that she's being friendly with the other people. Let's not worry if this is, like, a serious issue or not. Chucky milk! So when are we going to actually encourage Makina to act her age instead of, like, an eight-year-old? Nice impersonation. Seems I have become something of a celebrity. Well, that's not good. You don't say. Is she that angry with me? I've got an idea. Be yourself. So you've been deliberately filling in when she feels like disappearing, then. What's wrong, Michiru? Uh-oh. Michiru practically collapses into my arms, limp as a rag doll, fainting in the middle of a conversation? This is a first. What the hell is going on with this girl, anyway? It's probably not important. I carry Michiru to her room and lay her down on her bed. Although I expected her to be out for a while, only a few moments pass before she groggily sits up. It'll probably take a few moments for her to fully regain consciousness, but at least she appears to be alright. 
Unfortunately, the girl who woke up appears to be the Michiru I know best. You alright? Look at the light. I checked the reaction of her pupils with my pen light, but can't find anything out of the ordinary. Of course, at this point, I'm less worried about the girl's physical condition than her psychological state. I'm going to be blunt, Michiru. You should go to a hospital. You can't maintain a normal life under these circumstances. You know that yourself, don't you? Oh, are we actually going to get her the help she needs? That girl said the same thing. It's probably an appropriate step at this point. I curse silently, but it's too late. Since I wasn't in a position to predict the consequences, I've been careful to avoid directly mentioning the other girl to Michiru, but I was distracted by the problem in front of my eyes, and my tongue slipped. Now that we've reached this point, coming up with some half-assed lie would probably be counterproductive. Instead of trying to bluff, I answer honestly. She's... Well, I guess she's the other you. Uh-oh. We get the serious music. Mitra slowly raises a hand in front of her face, then sits there staring blankly into the palm like she's a wind-up toy that's run out of spring. This is getting good. <laughs> That's right. There's definitely someone else entirely inside you. Yes, we've had several conversations. Many, I guess. To be accurate, I've been talking with her pretty frequently these last few days. I'd really appreciate a straight answer. Michiru, who is she? Intrigue. I have the distinct sense that Michiru is hiding something, but there's clearly no point in pursuing the topic further right now. I offer a quiet nod instead. That girl seems to know you very well, down to the last little detail. You'd almost think she was standing over your bed watching you sleep. But in comparison, you don't know anything about her? Hmm, guess there's nothing we can do about that. In any case, she said it would be wise to get you to a hospital and... Michiru interrupts me mid-sentence. I answer with a curt, yes? What kind? Sorry, what are you asking? Makes sense. If she has no idea what this other personality is like, she would want to have an idea. A problematically broad question, but I decide to offer my honest impressions as they come to me. The other you is sociable and proactive, even aggressive. The girl sure makes her opinions are makes sure her opinions are known. That said, she refuses to talk about herself, so I can't say much more. What I do know is that she seems to be a frank, no-nonsense person. Mitra mm. mm. pesters me for more with the expectant eyes of a child demanding another chapter from a picture book. The girl sometimes takes eccentric actions, but she makes sure to handle the consequences herself. Seems to prefer clear-cut lines of responsibility. She's unpolished in some respects, but on the whole, I think it's f I think it's fair to say she handles herself well. In particular, she commits herself respectably to our classmate while you're out, or to our classmates while you're out, to the degree that nobody realizes it's not the real Michiru, at least. Yes, yeah, she is not evil, as far as I can tell.
Not sure what standard you want me to judge her against. But I don't think she's a heartless sociopath. That said, I know very little about what she's really thinking. Oh no, I don't like where this is going. Hold on, we shouldn't even be thinking about anything like that. If this is some sort of illness, we need a qualified doctor to call the shots. Although I keep it to myself, a certain proverb does occur to me. Two kings can't live in one country. But for some reason, there's an oddly relieved smile on Michiru's face. It's the expression of someone who has had a wad of gum cleanly peel off the bottom of their shoe by pure chance. Not really. <laughs> if you're asking whether I feel animosity toward her, then... Difficult to answer. I haven't been looking at her in that way. Funny you should say that, Michiru, because remember that kiss that we had? I kissed her before I kissed you. I wouldn't shove her away, but that's all about I can say. I recall my first definite encounter with the girl in question, when she did in fact abruptly kiss me. She justified it as the curiosity of someone without romantic experience, but in retrospect, that seems a strange excuse. Hold on, Michiru. Is there some point to these questions? The gears are turning. I will say, this story is getting very interesting now. The girl's normally about as sharp as a pile of bricks, but she hones right in on one of the problematic points. What a pain. <sighs> That's right. I suppose we might have kissed. Wasn't on my initiative, though. The girl suddenly pushed her lips on me. Mitru slowly traces her mouth with a fingertip as she speaks. Probably didn't even realize she's doing it. As her finger passes back and forth along her lips, her previously clear face turns to cloud, begins to cloud over. A deep wrinkle forms in the middle of her forehead, resembling the footprint of a bird in the fresh snow. That's right, it was. I agreed because the idea of playing house with you didn't strike me as objectionable. But to be fair, the girl had asked me to date you beforehand. I don't want you to misunderstand what I just said, so I'll clarify. I didn't play house with you because that girl told me to. It was entirely my decision. This, man. This is, these are the parts of the game that make me really like the game, because the writing is so interesting, and the, the story is so intriguing. She claimed to be asking because you'd fallen in love with me. It's just what she said to me. Your feelings are something only you understand for sure. I 
I try to answer, I see, but the words don't manage to escape my suddenly hoarse throat. I wouldn't say she kissed me because she was brave. She kissed me because she's like, I want to know what it's like to kiss people. And he's like, well, I guess I'm the only dude, so do it. And also, Mitsuru, you're having a real conversation with me right now. What does that say? <laughs> Mitsuru seems ready to cry at any moment. I head to the sink, fill a glass with water, and quietly hand it to her. She accepts it with a muted thank you, but doesn't drink. I still don't know which one is the primary personality, though. At the end of this long cascade of words, Michiru heaves a brief, heavy sigh, as if reaching a command to breathe in some invisible musical score. Not from where I'm standing. Don't worry about it. The black cat wanders in through the door and twines itself around Michiru's lower legs, but her expression remains stiff. This is getting depressing. The cat rubs up against Mitra's feet persistently before finally realizing she won't be dispensing the attention it's looking for. It leaves the room in evident disappointment. It's almost like watching a shadow of its own will break free of Michiru's body and escape. I'm not sure if this is a good idea to leave her alone. After silently patting Michiru's head a few times, I obediently leave her room. It's raining outside. Not entirely sure when it started, but it's our surround but our surroundings are already furrowly damp, chill and gray. The black cat dashes off somewhere through the cold rain, casting a long narrow shadow behind it. I try to call its name, but it's as though my throat had got grown rusted. My voice is wiped out by the sound of the falling raindrops. <laughs> 